Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back to uh, my latest video, the uh, penultimate one for revisiting the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. And if you're new here, I like to make these little videos about, uh, mainly about films. You know, ones that I enjoy and want to share, you know, tell people about. Although sometimes when I'm revisiting a franchise, there are cases where there are ones that I do not care for, especially revisiting ones that um, either I haven't seen since I was a kid, or actually visiting ones for the first time, such as some of the Hammer films. Occasionally I come across ones that I don't care for, but I still try to be nice. And if you enjoy this video, please be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to get notifications for when I put up new content, which is once or twice a week. Occasionally I throw in a third. Um, you know, stick around to the end and uh, be sure to hit that bell icon because watching these videos within the first hour really does help out quite a bit, as does sharing this channel and these videos around. Okay. Now that all that's out of the way, I'm closing in here. As I mentioned earlier, you know, if you've um, if you've been watching these earlier or if you're new here, you know, I've been revisiting the Nightmare on Elm Street um, franchise, which I had seen all of these films before, but some of them it had been a very long time since I'd seen them. I did something similar for the Friday the 13th films this past summer. So um, anyways, this latest entry is for the second to last before they hit their reboot. It's for the 1994 film Wes Craven's New Nightmare, the synopsis of which is as follows. A demonic force has chosen Freddy Krueger as its portal to the real world. Can Heather Langenkamp play the part of Nancy one last time to trap the evil trying to enter our world? Heather, huh? Well, that's where things take a pretty huge shift with this, and honestly, I um, kind of consider this to be outside of the franchise in a way at least outside of the Freddy Krueger Elm Street story arc of the franchise. Because um, as you can see um, from that synopsis that I read, this film is outside of the story and is more about Heather Langenkamp and her husband and son, as well as Wes Craven and Robert Englund, as themselves. Well, more like a fictionalized version of themselves, which, um, you know, it's ultimately a pretty decent entry in early 90s horror, I'd say. Um, to expand upon that synopsis a little bit more, um, basically a demonic force was played in uh, Wes Craven's dreams, pulling from beliefs from other cultures that storytelling is a way to kind of capture something. He made A Nightmare on Elm Street, which sort of held that, that demonic, uh, demonic force, and it was held throughout the franchise for years. And once part six came out, Freddy's Dead the Final Nightmare, it was no longer being held, so Craven started having those re recurring nightmares. Um, that this demonic form has now taken this Freddy image and is still existing and is posing a threat. So his thought is to do one final A Nightmare on Elm Street film with Heather Langenkamp reprising her role as Nancy to officially put this demonic force to bed. No pun intended. But um, while this is in motion, you know, this demon is wreaking havoc, causing problems for Heather and her family, um, which is quite an understatement, actually and even affecting Robert Englund, um, who not only plays himself, but also replies, reprises, like, not technically Freddy, but like this demon adhering to that Freddy image. So he looks very different. Um, so what we get is kind of this altered version of Freddy. You know, his look, like I said, is very different, but um, it's a bit more menacing, um, even down to like his glove looking much more like a claw rather than just the knives on an actual like leather and metal glove. Um, but he just looks like he's heavily inspired by Freddy by this point. In some ways, this makes him look a bit more evil looking, um, you know, more dangerous and more scary. Um, and that's where this one for me stands out from the three installments before. It's a horror aspect, the fright aspect. While this one is a bit meta in many ways, um, they focus more on the psychological terror that Heather and her child are going through, um, this demonic spiritual horror um, aspect as well is kind of being brought into play more. So both of those aspects of it, all those ideas kind of, um, they stick to that a lot more than they do with any kind of humor. You know, compared to the other ones, this one is humorless. Um, so we didn't get this watering down of the horror in favor of celebrating Freddy like we did in at least the, the previous three films. Um, we even get John Saxton playing himself as well as Tuesday Night playing herself in this, which is nice to see. And so all in all, this one actually feels like a very separate entry, you know, a separate early 90s horror film, which can be enjoyed, even if you've only seen the first film, you can enjoy this one. Um, it's a very self-contained horror film, which surprisingly, after my disappointment revisiting Freddy's Dead, um, it, this one definitely held up pretty well. You know, as you might have seen from my last two videos or last couple videos about films, Freddy's Dead Final Nightmare I didn't really care for, um, the horror of Frankenstein I didn't really care for, 
So I've been coming across some that I didn't really enjoy, and this one is one that actually held up and I really did enjoy it quite a bit. My only complaint would be that it's a little bit slow moving. You know, it's got a longer runtime. It's closer to that two hour mark. But I think the reason for this is that, um, you know, why it didn't sit that well with me is that I've just been through all of these other Elm Street films. I just went through part one through six, so I already know what this film is. That length was perhaps needed at the time that it came out to kind of clue the audience into what to expect with the film and kind of build up this new world. But, um, you know, if you're really familiar with the story of, you know, Freddy Krueger and this franchise, there may be a few points throughout it that feel like they're dragging or taking too long to explain something that ultimately you already have a good grasp on. But other than that, I mean, it was very enjoyable. You know, it's aged pretty well. I would put this one up there with parts one and three, actually. And um, I feel that the journey, you know, of, you know, Heather as Heather revisiting Nancy in this film works really well. And the story is definitely worth checking out um, and sticking them through to the end. And uh, speaking of checking out and sticking through to the end, thanks for checking out this quick little video, the latest one in my series. We're almost there. We got one more to go. And that one will be coming out on uh, Halloween, actually, as I revisit uh, Freddy vs. Jason and use that as a, as a definitive wrap-up of both the Elm Street stuff and the Crystal Lake stuff before diving into those remakes. So, anyways, uh, thanks for sticking around. Be sure to hit that subscribe and that little bell icon to get notifications for when I put up that new content. And I will see you in the next one.